This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. All of our podcasts are available from our website, www.sas.ac.uk. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to, uh, to be here. Does it sound okay? Yes. Um, I'm, I've been invited here, I think, just to give uh, an overall perspective on the issue of mining um, in general, in terms of economic development, in terms of Latin America, and, and in terms of Colombia. And so what I thought I'd do is just briefly begin by just talking about um, how uh, development economists see mining in terms of its contribution towards long-term economic development. And to put it briefly, there's a, a general debate, a discussion about this idea of the resources curse. So countries which are very rich in um, commodities um, and which mining is one, not only a commodity but a, a finite commodity, um, tend to perform relatively bad, they tend to, not always, but they tend to perform relatively badly. How do we understand um, this uh, phenomenon? Now, the, in Latin America in particular, this issue has been um, long um, regarded as a, a central one, and in fact some of the leading thinking in this area which comes from Latin America. And it's really obvious why that is, because of course in the case of Latin America, the resource curse was what brought the colonizers over. It's associated, the extraction of minerals is associated with colonization and violence and with um, not only no benefit accruing to the ordinary people of the, the continent, but in fact an awful lot of suffering associated with it. And so in that sense we can see the discussion about minerals in Latin America being within that context. In terms of economics, um, it's been pointed out that dependence on minerals is a problem for three economic reasons. One is the price is very volatile, well, so in terms of long-term development it leads to um, ups and downs and ups and downs in economic performance um, are suffered particularly badly by the people who have least. Um, secondly, it's, um, there has been suggested that over the long term, the prices of commodities tend to fall relative to other um, goods, manufacturers. That idea has gone out of fashion, and we'll have a look at that in a second. And um, thirdly, of course, if they're non-renewable resources, when they run out, what happens then? So as a long-term development strategy, um, unless you have other options in place, it's not going to do you well um, for the long term. But those are the immediate problems with commodities. But also there's kind of deeper problems which are associated with the kind of um, vicious cycles created by the nature of commodities in relation to the rest of the economy and society. And one of them is identified as a Dutch disease or whatever. If you have strong exports of commodities, you have a tendency for the exchange rate to be strong, and if the exchange rate is strong, it actually disadvantages the rest of the economy, sucks in imports, makes exporters, other exporters, unable to compete. So that's one side. Another one is commodity extraction is associated with unequal distribution of the wealth, the ownership of the, the assets from which the um, minerals are extracted. Not only is it associated with that kind of pattern of distribution initially, but it actually contributes to it. So those who are enriched by the process become even more rich. Thirdly, it's also associated, investment in mining is associated with lawlessness. So a country which has weak rule of law will be the country that attracts investment particularly to those areas where the activity is merely extractive and less involved in the domestic economy. Um, so it tends to favour those kind of economies, but contributes again to the worsening, a worsening cycle of lawlessness. And finally, of course, there's a question which has been raised um, over and over again. There's a whole question of a finite resource, which is part of the patrimony of a country. Who does it actually belong to? Is it 
the own, owned by people who own the land? Is it the um, uh, the state that can decide when the state or the particular government that's in power at that moment will benefit directly in terms of fiscal resources, or should it be governed in a different way? So having talked about that general thing, I'm just going to present in the rest of this talk, I've asked to be reminded after five minutes, yes, um, a series of slides showing some numbers, because as an economist, I like that. So there's a series of pictures here which kind of puts Colombia in the perspective today um, in terms of mineral extraction. And the first one is to point out that we are at the moment, now is a very good time to be talking about the issue of mining, because we are at the moment in, I mean, it's not it come out all that well, but this is a picture, the dates are from 1980 to 2011, and those are commodities prices. So you can see that in the last five years, we've had this enormous spike, five, six, seven years, enormous spike in commodities prices. And that has attracted, in Latin America, a surge in foreign direct investment. In fact, um, the global investment in mining is at all-time record levels. And Latin America represents 25% of the global investment in mining. So there's been an enormous surge. So it's important, and I think very timely, for this conference to be on the question of mining and development. Um, exhibit number two is, okay, so Latin America has these commodities. How is it benefited? And the first one I'm presenting here is um, the blue column shows um, the period, the average GDP growth per year in 2000 to 2005, and the red one is 2006 to 2011. And you can see very clearly that Latin America has outshone the world. So Latin America, there's been an acceleration in GDP growth despite the, the slowdown um, with the global crisis. Um, and in North America has done a lot worse because the OECD countries in general have done worse. So Latin America has benefited from the, from the commodities boom, you can see very clearly. The next exhibit is Latin America's poverty rates. And the period there is 1980 to 2010. Um, orange poverty is... Uh, I don't know what's happened to the focus here. The grass weren't that sharp in the first place. <laughs> but you can see the trend. The picture is there. Poverty levels have fallen in Latin America. So it looks like this has been a positive period for Latin America. Um, if we focus now into Colombia, we can see the particular issues that this raises. First of all, the positive part. Very clearly, in Colombia, the pattern of foreign direct investment, the surge in investment in the past few years, this graph is 1995 to 2010, and you can see that surge at the end, in the past five years. The surge has been led by oil and minerals. The orange line is oil and mining combined, and you can see that huge uptick there. Within Latin America, Colombia has taken a disproportionate amount of the minerals investment. <coughs> and if we look at poverty rates again, that was very vague, but I've been in This is Colombia. And this is 2002 on the, the, the dark orange. Sorry, can you hear? 2002 is a dark orange, and 2009 is the second column. Two things to note there, as a percentage of the population, you can see that Colombia is relatively high, um, but you have got a fall in poverty rates in Colombia, but the fall is also not particularly strong compared to other countries in Latin America, and that's quite interesting as well. So you've got a surge in FDI, you've got a surge in GDP as well in Colombia from uh, just under 4% to just under 5%, so it's shared the, the continents um, boom, um, and you have a, a slight fall in poverty. But if we go to the next slide, um, and this one I just want to, the next one's going to be very difficult to read, um, to look at some of the difficulties that are arising, which actually are just exactly the difficulties which you would anticipate with this kind of development. This, this chart is actually from 1926 to 2011. 
And it, what it shows, sorry, is the composition of exports. Now what's interesting there is if you look at the red um, block at the end, each year it shows the composition of exports. And you've got this massive expansion in the red to reach 49% of export earnings now come from oil. So that's a mineral, but it's not the one that we've got focused on. I think I'm okay. <laughs> focused on. We've also, if you add to that coal, and then you add to that minerals, you find that 70% of um, Colombia's export earnings are now coming from these primary commodities, which is quite different. In the previous 10 years, you had other commodities be be being more important. It coincides with Colombia signing its, the free trade agreement with the US just at the time when the, this is the real um, exchange rate uh, for uh, Colombia. It's a real exchange rate taking into account inflation. What you've got is an appreciation over the period 2006, which is the boom time, to 2012. And you can see the exchange rate accelerating, I mean not accelerating, rising. That's a 20% loss in competitiveness for those industries outside of mining. So you've got this classic case of what we call the Dutch disease, where your exchange rate is so strong that um, it squeezes out other activity. And in particular, it squeezes, it, it makes it difficult um, for um, producers outside mining to produce, and therefore unemployment tends to be an issue in that area. Now unemployment has gone down in Colombia in the last five years, but the official unemployment from 14% of to, well, the past 10 years, 14% to, to just over 10%. It's still high, and, and of, course, of course we know that Colombia has a high level of informalization. So that gives us an idea of some of the difficulties of management at this particular moment. The next slide um, is impossible to read unless I say what's on. <laughs> this is the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient measures the degree of inequality in a society. The top clump of countries is Latin America. The further to the right they are, the longer the, the column, the more unequal. And it is a characteristic of Latin America, well known that the level of inequality in Latin America is particularly high. Now within that clump, Colombia is the fourth most unequal in the region. It's a highly unequal society. So the other clumps, if you like, below is Asia. Those are all the countries in Asia. Um, developed countries and then the different reasons. Africa is the next one, and the other one is Eastern Europe, I think. But you can see that Colombia has this persistent structural problem, and in particular, um, you know, it's like Latin America in that sense, but it's a particularly um, poor country in, in that sense as well. So finally, so um, even though efforts have been made, cash transfers have been introduced, they're reducing poverty to some extent. But the problem with cash transfers is that they are temporary. I mean, to the extent that they increase human capital, education, that's a good thing. But they're a transfer. And if you've got a country, a government, which has got um, a bonanza in these years with the high commodity prices, the big question is what happens when that bonanza disappears? Will the fiscal squeeze that will inevitably come mean the end of that? Is that just a temporary um, improvement? or not. And then finally, if we look at the, the final chart, and this is where I'm going to finish, um, just kind of ask the question, this is a picture of Colombia from The Economist, and showing very clearly, you know, what The Economist is interested in is the extraction and the pipelines uh, taking the oil and the areas which um, can bring benefits to oil companies, but the same could be for the others. Um, what you have um, as a result of this or minerals boom is the depletion of a finite resource, the pollution that comes with it. Not only the inequality of benefits, but in fact there are some losers as well as some winners. And so, um, and then you also have a country with particularly high levels of violence, as we know, and the problem of impunity. So, to summarise, really, what I'm arguing here is that this question of progress, this question of mining investment bringing progress, putting along the wagon and all the rest of it, yes, it should be theoretically possible for a society as a whole to benefit possibly from mining so long as it didn't do too much environmental damage. But in the context of a country with very high levels of inequality, 
with an enormous problem of impunity and a problem of, of violence, the challenge to manage the boom and to manage extraction is particularly difficult and particularly urgent for Colombia because in a way these resources have given it an opportunity but it's an opportunity that we, which could actually lead to a worsening situation rather than improvement in development. So just a few thoughts there. Thanks very much.